This screencast will review the use of Microsoft Excel for data analysis and the creation of figures. The first thing I want to do is to go ahead and highlight my data. I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose Format Cells. I'm going to go to Number, select one decimal place so that I can display the appropriate number of uh, digits after the decimal according to the uncertainty from our experiment which was plus or minus 0 0.5 degrees Celsius so all of my measurements need to go one digit beyond the decimal. The next thing I'd like to do is to use Excel to help me calculate the average results for the different trials of the experiment so I'm going to go ahead and display my average in this cell right here I'm just going to click on home and under the statistical functions in the upper right corner I'll choose average and you can see that it's highlighting the cells that I want it to be looking at to find that average and I'll just click return or enter to display that average and I'll do the same thing for the other trials in our experiment I'll now use Excel to help me calculate the standard deviation for each of the trials. So once again, under statistical functions, I now need to select more functions. And in the pull down, I need to choose statistical, if that's not already done. And then I'll just scroll down and choose standard deviation A. So I just need to find it on the list here. And there it is. So standard deviation A. I'll click on OK and then I'm going to highlight the data. I want to be careful not to accidentally highlight the average. And now I have calculated my standard deviation. And I can do this again for each of the trials that we ran in class. So again, standard deviation A is what I'm looking for. Oops, went a little too far. Standard deviation A, click on OK. I'm going to highlight my data, but not the average. And then press return or enter. I'm now ready to, go, uh, to copy my data to move that into my paper. However, there's one thing I'd like to do before uh, completing this step. So I'm just going to go and highlight these cells and select bottom border. And I'm just going to go ahead and do this right at the very bottom of my data set as well. These borders are going to carry over when I copy and paste uh, this data into my Word document. So let me go ahead and copy my data. I'm just going to do Control C. And then if I put this into my Word document, you can see that those um, lines that I put in are going to carry through. So it's going to divide my table into those different categories. So I've got uh, my headings, then the data, and then I'm separating the statistical information, the average and standard deviation. And you can note that it already created a figure here, table one, temperature change in hands and water, delta T from class experiment to determine best survival strategy to avoid hypothermia. N equals 16, this is referring to the fact that we had a total of 16 data sets for the class. Now I'm ready to add a chart, so I'm going to go ahead and move to the insert tab. And you'll note that I've added some information here that's going to make labeling of my chart a little bit easier, so I just moved the same headers that we have at the top here down here. Um, so I would like to go ahead and highlight this information and I'll select column, two-dimensional, clustered column. You can see that that's going to create the following graph. I'm now going to clean up a few things on my chart. First I'm going to just go ahead and remove this label for the series and then I want to now go ahead and uh, right click on the horizontal category axis. So I'm right clicking on that choosing format axis and then for axis labels I just want to go ahead and move that down so it makes it easier to read everything so I can read delta T fist, delta T open, delta T water. Now I'll click on the layout tab and I would like to go ahead and add titles for my axes so I can go to primary vertical axis or primary horizontal axis to go ahead and display those. I'll pause this and I'll go ahead and actually I'll go ahead and show one. Let's do title below axis and for axis title we had hypothermia survival strategies. I'll now click layout again and again back to axis titles. I now want to add a vertical axis I'll do a rotated title and if I just go ahead and click into this space here I'll add in 
with my appropriate title. Now I'm going to change the color that's displaying in my bars. So I want to go to Format Data Series, and I'll go to Fill. I'll choose Gradient Fill, and I'll select a color here. This isn't exactly what I wanted. So again, rather than choosing a gradient fill, we want to choose a solid fill. <laughs> and we're just going to choose a light gray color. And that's going to give us a nice appearance to our figure. I'll now show the process for adding the error bars. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my plot area and go to layout and select error bars more error bar options. I'm going to select custom and specify value. For the positive error value we do want to use the standard deviation value so I'm going to go ahead and highlight those. And now to choose the negative error bar I would like to also select my standard deviation values. And hit return and now OK and close and you can see now that the error bars are being displayed appropriately on the graph. Now that I have a chart that I'm happy with, I can go ahead and copy this. Actually, I need to click over here. Let's try that again. So I'm going to go ahead and copy. And then I can paste that into a Word document. So it's displaying that I have uh, titles for my axes. I've displayed my error bars and below this I'm going to have a figure that's in bold and then a description. Uh, this is the legend. This is telling me what's in the graph. Please note at this point I'm not going to be able to edit this figure. If I did find that there was any editing that I would need to do, I would need to go back to my Excel file, make the modifications that I need there, and then copy that new version and then go ahead and paste that back into Word. Additional information can be found with uh, looking at an online tutorial located at the following URL. This tutorial discusses how to make a graph with error bars in Excel and does give some information which is specific to other versions of Excel not featured in this video.